Um, I know. What have you been up to lately? Oh, well, I there's been a lot of school that's been in the way of my YouTube progress. However, uh, <coughs> a few weeks ago, we put out two very momentous videos, those being a gaming PC video called Electrobytes and a gaming setup video that went along with it that was Fortnite-themed and combined the two videos have about 250,000 views at about two to three weeks after posting as of the date. That was okay, Fortnite so, um, and combined. What's, what's that like compared to your regular average? Oh, like how, how well are they doing? It's a good sign. It just goes to show that um, your audience is very picky. <laughs> the only watch okay, content so, um, that they subscribe for. What's, what's that like compared to your regular average? Oh, like wait, how, how well are they doing? It's a good sign. It just goes to show that your audience is very picky. It's so important. The only watch content is being provide that niche content can't over and over and over go out and come back and rewatch it. Because that's why you just see many YouTubers. That's why they start having a niche spread of their content wide on YouTube. Really is being provide that niche content over and over and over. My niche back and definitely it. That's why you think that's PC gamers that are starting off or budget spread all their content. Say if I put out a really expensive PC build, I guarantee you. What do you see as your niche? popular as a budget Definitely, build because that is anything that's PC gaming for are really cheap you know and then it's more okay. budget on my channel the same if I put out a really expensive PC build I guarantee you it wouldn't be as an average as popular as a budget build because that is more I put out a very excellent and well made $300 build what's your usual and recently I put out that $500 electric the average is 500 so 400 somewhere around that range this last summer I put out a very electric well made but people who didn't make it know Exactly what and we're talking about. Yeah, recently so it's not just any and all regular electronic gaming build. PC builds so you find on YouTube. Around that range. It's more about the design. Can you tell us about that? I watched the video on that. Uh, yeah, the GPU electric bike. Like like people who didn't may not know exactly Bitcoin. what we're talking about. Yeah, right. So stuff. it's not just any other and regular so focus of it. PC is that it doesn't have a dedicated graphics card. That being said, it uses integrated graphics that are powerful enough to run games. But, but it's super, it's super awkward, awkward because, because you don't, you don't see graphics, graphics cards consistent, consistent, consistent and people, and people are, like, are like, what? What? You know? You know? Right, where's, right. Where's the graphics super, super awkward, awkward like me reaching out and saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, anyway the, system the system itself, itself game, 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 pretty well. Holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. People talk. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. Your audio is way too low. Our audio is way too low. I'm just gonna change, change, change some things, things up. Change things to 2023. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty sure this is better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The audio. Pretty sure this is better. Is it? Is the audio in front or behind? Because mm. I can put a delay on the thing, but. Oh. The audio out of sync. I think it matters, is really. It, it doesn't. It yeah. Also, like, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you, though, for helping the audio in front or behind. Yeah, no, you got nice people, because yeah, I can put a yeah, delay on the thing. Uh, but, but, viewers oh. coming in, tuning in. But, yeah, I don't think it matters, oh, you know really. what? I'm it doesn't. About yeah. Yeah. Also, it's like, literally like Go ahead and subscribe. Thank you, though, for helping us out on that. This summer, I will be at the Electronic Entertainment I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off, but can I do an obnoxious intro to that? Oh, yeah. We're going to cut this. Because that... Go ahead. All right, we got Mark over here for the first time ever in the history of forever. We'll be out there for all of you fuckers at E3. You heard it right. Mark Aranabar, Scattervolt. All right, we got Mark over here for the first time ever in the history of forever. We'll be out there for all of you fuckers at E3. You heard it right. Mark Aranabar, Scattervolt, the Scattervolt. It's will be at E3 this summer in LA. Very crazy because I think I this yeah. is my one <laughs> shot to finally <laughs> meet all so those. Yeah, I know. I wanted to see how much I can make it. That all right, been, sorry. Yeah, so no, yeah, no, no, that's for quite a long it's time. It's something that's going to be but very crazy because I think I have an actual method. This is my mm-hmm. one so this shot. might be actually my one shot to finally meet all those that high profile to the YouTubers and actually start developing some on YouTube for quite a long time. Considering that, watching kind of on the cusp of reaching those high subscribers might be actually my one shot to find right out currently at 185,000 subscribers and actually start all these connections two weeks ago I was about considering that kind of on the cusp of and that's just really new videos high subscriber count momentum 
It's just right now I'm currently at 105,000 really subscribers. That's what I was, was going to ask you, because last time you came on, you were at about 169,000, yeah. 500. And that's just now you're uh, videos. well so over 180. Lot of but it's your goal was to get 10,000. That's what I was going to ask you, because last time you came on, you were at about 169,000 or last time. And I've heard an interesting argument recently that your goal was to get 10,000. You don't know when you fail. And even if it hurts, it's better than no. Now we did because if you don't know when you fail, you're only going to know when you fail. I've heard an interesting argument, and it's like a life ending failure that, or a life changing If you don't set your goals, you can't. You don't know when you So, can you, can you, you know, you know why? Do you think you haven't hit that goal? Apologies, that was really dumb. <laughs> I actually wrote it down to mute that. Let me make sure everything else is muted. All right. All right, cool. Yeah, now that should be good. Cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and while we're at it, though, do this one. Cam control, pan. Mm. Why didn't it move? Oh, I don't know. Huh. Let's just do it the right way. Put zero. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's get back to the topic. Sorry about that. Mm, it's good. Don't Continue. Worry. All right. Yeah, we were talking about failure. We're not talking about your comments anymore, though. Okay. <laughs> No, sorry. Thank you very much, though, for that. Mm -hmm. That's greatly appreciated. You probably just saved this entire episode. Yeah. Um, and that would have been really disappointing reaching oh, out to me. That was the viewers. No, I'm, t I'm talking to the viewers. Yeah. Thank you. Um, who, who was the person who commented that? Oh, a lot. yeah. A lot of people. All right. That's thank good. you to everybody who commented about the overlapping audio. You just saved me a huge headache mm -hmm. um, and probably minor depression. <laughs> but, uh, all right. Back to this topic. Mm -hmm. Mark, continue. Mm, yeah, so uh, the goal is to hit 10,000 subscribers a month. That hasn't been hit, but from what I calculated, I should have hit 200,000 by April. It's been April, currently at 186,000. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I completely blame school for that. But I think at least the last two weeks have indicated that if I get back on top and I start uploading again, I can start <coughs> increasing that subscriber count and get it to 300,000 by the end of the year. It's just all about uploading consistently. Right, okay, mm -hmm. so what's your plan going forward? Because I know a couple weeks ago you tweeted out, you know, this many, uh, just a few more weeks until I'm full-time YouTube. Yes. And so this summer you are going full-time YouTube. Yes. Um, that's a big risk as far as like income goes. How, I mean, how so? Well, because, I mean, let's say your YouTube channel, somehow you get a whole bunch of community guideline strikes or it's a glitch or something and they ban you. Okay. And now you can't upload videos, and even if it's a glitch, you know it takes YouTube. I mean, years to get back to you, mm. um, and so there's a delay there, and you just have no income. Mm. Um, but also, going through the entire summer, yep. do you already have plans for the exact videos that you're going to shoot? Oh yes, or I've got a lot of ideas. There, there isn't a full detailed upload schedule, but there's a storybook that I have that just has a lot of ideas and mm -hmm. a lot of really cool inventive ideas that I've yet to actually reveal and I'd rather keep them secret. Okay. Right? I don't want to spoil them all, but I feel like it's going to be very game changing because it's different. It's okay. still hitting the niche that I've been known for, but it's different. What are, what are we talking creative. about here? I've just seen the tech scene on YouTube be dominated by these older guys who've been in the game for so long. I feel like people are finally wanting to see somebody new who can actually match up to their level but produce something different and something that is, I'd say, more entertaining than the norm that they've been used to. 
Right, mm-hmm. right. Well, that's one thing I've noticed. Um, that's another reason that we've recently gotten into like uh, Twitch and Mixer, mm-hmm. um, which if anybody doesn't know what Mixer is, it's Microsoft's version of Twitch. Uh-huh. Um, and Twitch is amb- owned by Amazon. Speaking of which, go look at our old videos. The last gameplay, there's a thing for free Twitch in there. There's mm-hmm. a code. Um, well, a link, but you get the point. Um, and so it's going through this changing is there's been a lot of changes and I was going to talk to you about that with the Wall Street Journal article that I had pulled up mm. about um, saying can you pull that up and then switch to the yeah. um, switch the camera yeah. so they can see the screen mm. um, it's just Wall Street Journal under tech uh, and then so basically the TV companies they forecasted the uh, number three TV company mm. um, in the United States Lost it projected a loss of 40,000 viewers for the first quarter. Yeah, they lost 144,000. Oh, Tech, their stock dropped 11 percent um, as a response. But the way I see it is a lot of those people are going to YouTube, mm-hmm. they're going to Hulu, mm-hmm. they're going to Netflix, they're going to Twitch, mm-hmm. they're going to Mixer. Oh, yeah, they're getting to this more personal, shorter videos on demand. Mm-hmm. And you have things like radio, I mean, radio is dying rapidly. Um, TV, obviously, they're looking at three, almost four times the amount of losses that they were already projecting losses. Mm-hmm. Um, so, that, I mean, there's no end goal that's a higher mountain for these people. Mm-hmm. What do you see for your audience growing, especially because now you're going to come out with this different direction? Mm-hmm. Um, how do you see, is the new direction part of that? Well, I would not call it a new direction. It's more or less a continuation, but it's a continuation at 100% effort. Okay. Yeah. But uh, with all these changes, though, with the media environment, I think it only goes to show kind of like the decreasing time spans or attention spans of viewers and how they want consistent content that keeps on giving in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. That's what Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat have all programmed us to do. And YouTube is in that mix, but it deals more or less with videos. Right. But... People just want to see entertaining content that keeps on like every 30 seconds coming up with something new. That's why you see a lot of top end YouTubers with their videos just have like a new piece of content every 30 seconds, like a new photo, video, animation, something, because the attention spans of these people are getting smaller and smaller due to how social media and all the new apps are basically changing the way we look at information and receive it. Yeah, and then do you see YouTube? I mean, obviously they've kind of changed in the direction. Of, to me, it would appear they're going to more of a social website mm-hmm. where you can interact with people. I remember, do you remember when response videos used to be a huge thing? Oh. And people used to post response videos. Right, yeah. um, uh-huh. That was what, almost... 2015. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there, I mean, there was reaction videos mm-hmm. and then it became the let's play. Yeah. Uh, those are the dark days of YouTube. Mm-hmm. And so now what I'm seeing is they're going to the more of this community thing uh, where mm-hmm. you can release polls, you can put out pictures. Some sure. of the people I follow in my subscriptions, it'll just be a post. Yeah. And I, I click on it and I'm like, where's the video? Mm-hmm. There is no video, but there's a ton of comments, likes, um, and it's basically the same setup. But do you think so, uh, YouTube is going to become more social? And where people have to interact more with their audience. That's what I, I was t- messaging yes. you about that the other day. YouTube is under so much fire all the time. I personally believe that we should be giving them more credit than what they actually have been getting as of recent. Because just a lot of people are unsatisfied from YouTube mm-hmm. due to um, more or less in a sense the monetization as of recent. Because a lot of people do rely on YouTube for their income. Whereas with me, it's not as high because I'm just a college student, right? Right. But um, they are trying really hard because you have Instagram that has all those features. And uh, whenever they made that very aggressive move to make stories, that directly competed with Snapchat. Mm -hmm. And that yet again was another sort of like community feature. So YouTube more or less has to kind of evolve to these newer applications that can give instant social media response. Because YouTube, for the most part, has just been known for making videos. Right. Right. But to actually get more in touch with your content creators and to improve the traffic on their site, I feel like it was a smart choice to include these new community features so they can get more and more people watching their site and kind of like get them to let their creators know them a little bit better through these community posts and other things. Right. So Um, more or less just evolution. Okay. So they're just having to change 
I mean, they're gradually they're adapting to the market. Yeah, they're coming in late, um, which is interesting. Mm. But they're also, in a way, being the first ones to do it. But I think Twitch. I mean, Twitch, Twitch as far as like interacting with people. Face. Yeah. Um. I mean, YouTube introduced super chats, right? Um, super chat for live streams. Yeah. Yeah. I believe kinda... they have super chat for live stream now, and then they have donations for um, as you can put them as uh, not not annotations. What are the things called? Cards. Yeah. Cards. You can put it as a card. Uh-huh. Um. And so, you also, you can interact with other people's channels, have polls, mm-hmm. things like well, that. One thing we should talk about is YouTube is actually coming out with, like, the, you heard of YouTube That's TV. That's right. I yeah. not. It's, like, basically, pull up, I mean, it's pull like, up an article, though. It's basically just live stream TV, but through Mark, YouTube. Like TV? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, we added the TV. Um, yeah. And so, basically, I mean, like, it's direct competition with cable, because you can get rid of your cable subscription, and you can mm-hmm. go to a YouTube subscription. Yeah. And, um. It's actually really smart because there's so many people that don't want their cable subscriptions anymore because they pay way too much for watching like three channels or four channels. I mean, I know it's something I've talked to my parents mm. about like what they're wanting to do with that because I mean, realistically, it doesn't like unless you're really watching a lot of cable TV, yeah. which no one, not a lot of people really are anymore. Yeah. Right. Uh, it doesn't I mean, make sense. I mean, they lost 144,000. Yeah. And I think like the thing with YouTube, I think you can just, I mean, you can live stream pretty much any. Yeah, you can live stream on your phone now. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but any like live TV that you want, like any channels like ABC or whatever. Yeah. Because so. why would you want to play like pay a cable subscription when you can just get it on your internet connection yeah. mm-hmm. or your data connection? Exactly. Right. And it's probably it's, I think it's a lot cheaper. I don't remember how much money. Yeah, it, it will be I think cheaper. It's fifteen ninety nine a month right now or something like that. Yeah, because they're they're losing subscribers. Mm-hmm. Cable is so they have to raise the price. Right. Right, um, and I mean, it's just going to be harder for them, especially, uh, I mean, net neutrality probably impacts them next year um, with mm-hmm. the bandwidth taking up, I mean, obviously, if they're taking up a ton of bandwidth mm-hmm. and they're not getting any viewers. Mm-hmm. For, there was an interesting article on um, NBC or whoever has Megyn Kelly. They spent $69 million on her contract, wow. and they're losing followers left and right. Damn. Like, there's YouTubers who live stream on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. I mean, Ninja gets more views than them oh, yeah. than Megyn Kelly right now. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And Ninja doesn't have 69 million, but he's on his way. Yeah. Um, Twitch is, Twitch is, yes, has so. made some huge moves this year. I'm very impressed by it's it. It's very interesting because, like, look at cable TV has an average of $103 per month. Who wants to pay that? What? <laughs> what? That's the average <laughs> cable TV bill. <laughs> Goodness. I know, but YouTube Damn. is... Forty dollars a month. So okay, that that's a price increase. I mean, but yeah, went up from I wonder if you get a do you did get a discount if you have red. I do not. Um, wouldn't be surprised. Because if they do, I'm staying with Android forever. Because mm. <laughs> you, if you don't know, um, if you have Google Play Music, you get YouTube Red for free. Oh, oh I didn't know that. Yeah. It's like uh, nine ninety nine per month for an individual, yeah. or if you're interested, I can add you on, and we can go family plan. Even just the two oh, of us, it'd be okay. like eight bucks a month after tax. Okay, okay, yeah. Because I already have a re- YouTube Red subscription. Mm-hmm. Are you paying for that on monthly? Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. Just join my family plan on Google Play. <laughs> okay. Um, we may pick some of you people in the interactions. Yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. you throw it on there, you get yeah, it's it's phenomenal, mm-hmm. um, and. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that after. But what I was going to say was, with all of these people switching over to YouTube, yeah. you have YouTube with this huge, huge monetization problem. Mm. And that, I mean, what, at least half PewDiePie's videos? He's their number one person. At least half We're his videos. Like, probably five-sixths. Yeah, five, yeah. Uh, an obnoxious number of his videos, yes. especially, uh, especially last week I asked you, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, which, phenomenal content, by the way. Yeah. There's no ads. There's yeah. no ads. I was watching him on the Lifer podcast, which isn't read, no ads, nothing. And so he's getting demonetized. And if they're going to have, you know, top people getting demonetized, mm. YouTube needs to start bringing in revenue at some point mm. to match the number of viewers that are coming over. Because every single person who streams, whether or not they're paying, it costs YouTube money. Mm-hmm. You know, and I mean, it's not per individual, it's probably per couple hundred million views Correct. but on a daily basis that starts adding up if you have your biggest producers not being able to draw in any income mm-hmm. and it also pisses them off and they can go over places like twitch they can go to mixer mm-hmm. um they could go there's other ver- versions of alternatives to youtube popping up they could have their own website mm-hmm. this thing there's a podcast i watch london real yeah uh yeah do you yeah. watch them yeah, they're only like two hundred. They're only like two hundred thousand subscribers, uh-huh. but they have their own website. 
Yeah. And that's where all their subscribers are. Because subscribing to their YouTube, if you're a member of their website, there's no point to it. Mm -hmm. And so I was going to ask, do you think that individual YouTubers are going to start approaching advertisers themselves? Mm -hmm. Because if you have PewDiePie, if he approached, I mean, any any gaming company whatsoever and said, yeah. hey, million dollars a year, I'll mention you in every single thing. Well, he already does that, actually. Right. Yeah. With so, ass. So um, one of his recent videos, he sponsored the new HTC Pro V10 or something like that. Yeah. Or um, Huawei or something like that. It was the same thing that um, Gadal Gadot, the, the girl who played uh, Superwoman, not Superwoman, Wonder Woman in uh, the new uh, Superman movie or whatever, she also sponsored that phone too. So mm -hmm. he is directly contacting these big companies, or at least they're reaching out to him and they are paying him money. And he's also doing a lot of sponsorships, like um, Soylent, I think, is a sponsorship that he's a part of. Uh, it's funny because he had a Soy videos. Boy uh, he had video. Yeah, a Soy Boy video. That, and then, um, of course, his chair, his razor products. But can you do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But can you do this? <laughs> I saw I saw your chair review, actually, so you can, yeah, you can do this. Do you can do it. Um, if y'all are new subscribers to Mark, you go look at his older videos. I, saw, I watched a whole bunch of your older videos. Man, the change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That hair back then. Uh -huh. Two thumbs up. Oh, man. <laughs> but um, for the most part, actually, Peter Pye just sent out a tweet, and one of his uh, merch items, I believe it was a... Russian sweater or something like that mm -hmm. it reached 10,000 units yeah. that were sold so he is finding ways to fund himself financially and mm -hmm. luckily for PewDiePie he isn't one of those other YouTube content creators that are huge and are making a living off of showing how rich they are right you know so he he's basically a gamer mm -hmm. so he doesn't need to spend a lot of money so luckily he's smart with it but he's still getting a stable enough income by collaborating with all these direct companies and I can personally vouch on my end that I have received some offers before that have offered up quite a bit mm -hmm. so Feel free to send them our way oh <laughs> but, but yes you, it is possible and uh, more or less though kind of to add on to this and then we'll move on to the next point but did you see YouTube's new monetization standard that they're going to be implementing and like their beta testing with certain YouTubers oh uh, no, no but I'm, is it going to give me a headache because I already have a headache enough um, about it it I don't know. It's a merit-based system. So they're, okay. you're getting a select few YouTubers, mm -hmm. and they're going to detect how like safe your content is to monetize off of like your own personal like merit. So it's going to give you like a little sheet and be like, is your content suitable for advertising? You put like yes, no, with, like a certain degree, one to five, and there's all these other questions. And then from there, YouTube will play certain ads that fit that sort of rating for the video so in a sense you're giving your own rating mm -hmm. or maturity level for the video and only certain ads will display on those videos based on the rating you gave it right okay but you may be asking but what about like those youtubers who just ab will abuse it right well youtube still with their like you know monetization detection system where they detect how safe your content is they will go through see how like reliable your merit-based ratings are mm -hmm. and they'll de determine if you are still suitable for this system where you can rate your own ads or if you'll go back to the old system right okay yeah. so it's something really interesting i feel like it's a new unique way to approach the monetization problem on youtube mm -hmm. it's something most certainly different well, it's but... something i said eight to eight months ago but no big deal <laughs> oh is that true that might have been. Yeah, I said I literally in our last podcast. I think I mentioned that. Mm. But, but uh, I said if you could go to like specific advertisers and say I just want to advertise on this channel or I just want to advertise mm -hmm. to this type of viewer, that's yeah. basically what they're doing. Is they're Similar. going to give you a funnel and yeah. you knock yourself down in the funnel, uh -huh. and then they have advertisers that fit into that funnel. Yeah. So I feel like it'd be really interesting. I'm kind of curious to see how it pans out. Mm -hmm. But at least for my videos, they're all going to be good. Yeah. Because um, I haven't received any monetization, any copyright, any sort of strikes whatsoever. There have been other YouTubers, though, that have received those pending monetization icons before. And I'm like, what? Uh -huh. You know, they've been smaller than me. But for me, it hasn't happened whatsoever. So I can't vouch that it is random at times if you get monetized or demonetized. But for me, it's been good so far. And I'm really blessed that nothing crazy has happened in terms yeah, of monetization. It, it's going to be interesting to see how if the monetization um, cuz they pay per thousand, do they still pay per thousand views? Um it, I don't keep track of it that much it's, anymore. It, it, yeah, but I'm I'm interested to see if they're like per 
section is going to increase in price. Mm. I have no clue. Um, because they're probably they might charge people more to advertise because mm. of the filters. Mm. Depending on where they want to advertise. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm curious to see. That'll, that be, yeah, that. that'll be interesting. Um, and then I was going to ask you, transitioning yeah. to Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. To YouTube. Uh, yeah. To people's reactions mm. to um, basically how you do things, you know? And then I was going to ask, apologies, switching this. I was going to ask, okay. Kanye. Uh, uh, yeah, well, you know it's coming. Yeah, Kanye. Mm -hmm. um, this goes back a little bit to what we were talking about at the gym the other day. Okay. Um, it seems that if you know you have the wrong opinion, you can lose what was it nine million followers in seven minutes. Okay. What do you think that means as far as like the future of social media goes? Mm. Because like let's say there's certain like let Logan Paul right? Yeah. Or was is that, is that his name? Yeah, Logan Paul. That sounds so weird to say. Um, he didn't lose. He actually gained. Right, more. right, right. But let's say, you know, the next time it's a loss. Okay. And he loses half his followers. Because mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't know how many, Dan, how many followers does Kanye have on Twitter? Kanye, well, now he's got like 25 million. 25. So he lost a significant following there. Oh, from, from what? From, he tweeted a uh, tweet oh, yeah, yeah. that was in support of Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, uh, what was his original count before that? It was like, 30, it was like 34 million. Yeah, yeah, so if you go from 34 like to 29, I mean, Kanye doesn't do... Multiple million people in one tweet. Yeah, he, he doesn't do he doesn't do sponsorships, I would assume not. Yeah. But, like, let's say you're a YouTuber, mm -hmm. and you have 34 million versus you have 26 or 25. That's a big uh -huh. difference yeah. in, like, how much people are willing to pay you because uh -huh. you're increased liability how much they're going to pay you per video, per view, per everything. So everything decreases and you're going to see it. Like if you drop 10%, your pay may drop 15. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you see that as far as like this new filtering goes? Like what if, let's say the filtering, right? YouTube matches up the filter, right? And somebody puts an ad on your video yeah. and you say something that their audience, that they're not looking for, or it offends their audience or mm -hmm. something along that. And they call YouTube and they report your channel mm -hmm. or something like that mm -hmm. and you lose a whole bunch of followers and it becomes a huge media thing uh, like it, it seems like that could be a problem mm -hmm. so you're saying like the advertiser goes in and they're like I don't like this and then they contact YouTube and then YouTube basically punishes you right and because they can't they can't punish the advertiser yeah and so I, I see that as a as like so a, a, sense, a fault with the filtering is that uh -huh. they, if even if they correctly filter something mm -hmm. if the advertiser isn't happy with it at the end of the day yeah you're gonna be the one that pays mm. so ethically it's all up to the advertiser but I mean that's if they're really like I feel like YouTube, in a sense, would have their own sort of like verification system for these advertisers, right? right? To ensure that they won't do those sort of malicious things, mm -hmm. because you know that if that sort of strike or that sort of situation were to happen on a YouTuber, he will make a video over it, mm -hmm. and it will reach YouTube, and then they will see through and hopefully fix the situation. So I don't feel like advertisers could kind of bully or abuse people just because they don't like it. So then like. They don't have to pay for their advertisement because then it like gets removed or something so it'd be cheaper for them but i feel like there's a good enough system in place to check the like validity of these advertisers so mm -hmm. that they don't do that but um now that's an interesting point though that you bring up because a few of those situations have happened before where the advertiser kind of intervenes and brings youtube on the scene right and causes the content creator to get some little short losses but from what I've seen, those content creators fight back with their own video, completely explain the situation, have their humongous audience support them, and basically reverse the decision. Uh huh. Well, I mean, Logan Paul. Oh. He basically just did that. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, he gained, he, as you said, he gained when, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know. He lost, he gained. It's like any, like, bad publicity is not a bad thing, right? Any mm -hmm. publicity is not a bad thing, right? Yeah. I, I feel like it's different in Kanye's situation because that's on Twitter. Also, is that something that's going to stick? Yeah. Like, that that's glue. Mm -hmm. Kanye got hit with a glue ball. Yeah. Um, and on YouTube, it 
it deals with videos, monetization, subscriptions. So like Kanye is not produ- producing any content related things on Twitter. Mm-hmm. It's just like I, I feel like it's a different circumstance for Twitter because if he lost nine million followers then, in seven minutes, then yeah, I mean, you know, it's a huge deal. But with YouTube, I feel like it might be opposite because then you generate drama. You get more followers, more people know about YouTube. You can channel. make a "We Need to Talk" video. Yeah. Uh huh. Um. All right. So speaking of that, mm-hmm. what is the guy? You know, you're you're pivoting slightly for this summer. Mm-hmm. Um. Last time we were on, we talked about you know your five, ten year goals. Yeah. Uh, they included possibly you know building your own computers, your brand, building yeah. the, the scatter vault brand. Mm-hmm. What is, um, I mean, I'm sure we still have some of your viewers. Hopefully they don't get bored with me, but, um, oh, no, we got some. is, uh, what, what's something that you can kind of tell them as far as like changes or new things that are going to be coming out soon yes. as far as, are you going to take steps in that direction? Are you mm-hmm. going to pursue that? Or are you going to keep pursuing what you're doing or are you, mm-hmm. what's, what's That's coming a up? Very good question. But I think, uh, what I've been kind of feeling out in the last few weeks aside from those really big statements that I told you in our first podcast were that I feel like just for the summer I need to dedicate myself to the basics okay mm-hmm. right I feel like at my current level of kind of like on YouTube compared to other tech YouTubers I'm not quite at that level to take that huge leap I'm not 100% known so I feel like I need to just stick it to the core basics for this summer and just upload consistently and really get a strong following so that I can support myself if I were to do those really big business decisions Mm -hmm. and create a brand, create gaming computers, which who knows how long that'll take, but I think at this rate, considering my school schedule for next year, that could happen whenever I feel like it's ready. Whereas I told you before I was going to start that over the summer. I mean, that doesn't mean I'm going to like, you know, slowly look into it and see like how the process would work, right? And contacting brands, getting parts, shipping and all that. Mm-hmm. I could certainly do experimentation because that would be the time to do it. But actually making the statement, making it happen, that might be a little bit longer because I'd rather focus on building up like the core before I expand. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're getting back to your base. That's mm-hmm. something that I think a lot of people struggle with. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you follow Gary V. Gary Vee? Vanderchuk. Um, the guy who wants to buy the Jets. Nice. Oh, I don't know who this guy is. Um, he's big social. You know who Gary Vee is. Am I the only person who knows who? I guarantee you in the chat right now, everybody's like, how do you not know who Gary <laughs> Um, But uh, they, they're like a minute behind. Here, is but, my phone going really off? Someone's... Some no, it's going off. What is that? There's an alarm going off somewhere. <laughs> What is this? What is this invasion? Hold on. Ooh. All right. Oh, there we go. All right. But yeah, Gary Vanderschick. Van- 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 yeah, I do not know about this guy. Well, okay, I've maybe seen How? a few photos, but I literally know nothing about this guy. I don't know why he wants to buy... Jets. He's from there. The Jets, not Jets. Oh, the Jets. The Jets, the football team. Oh. For three billion. Still have no clue. Um, well, basically, he, he went and talked to, uh, well, the Paul brothers went and talked to him after their whole fiasco mm-hmm. to see, but that was the advice he gave them was, you know, get back to your basics. What made you big? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, basically, he's a motivational slash business speaker. He had a wine business uh, back when online was getting first big. Basically, mm-hmm. cornered the online wine market, mm-hmm. um, and now he does social media marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, clients pay him like hundred thousand a month. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I'm starting to think about starting a social media marketing thing because it's really easy. Yeah. Um, but uh, let me switch topics completely now. Mm-hmm. Um, we were talking the other day at the gym mm-hmm. with your friend, uh, Gabe. Gabe yeah. And it came down to how do you define woke? woke. Which, hold on, I hate that word, uh, um, especially in its current context. Mm-hmm. But um, how would you define that? I think it's just uh, really seeing how society is right now and really like 
I think kind of finding your own path, not the path that society dictated for you, right? So the typical path would be to go down, get like an engineering degree or whatever, mm-hmm. like get a job, start a family at like 28, 27 or something and, and do what America programmed you to do. Mm-hmm. Being woke is when you can really see what your true path is and in a sense being like this is how I'm gonna kind of like steer my vehicle through life in a sense I'm gonna take it upon myself to do it this way because this is the way that I really want to do it so it's like finding in a sense your true meaning which means the means you'll do to achieve that are unusual and different you know okay yeah and how do you see that in your life would you consider yourself woke um I know I'm working towards an engineering degree, but realistically, in the end, I feel like jumping onto this new like media platform, like YouTube, online stuff, may be the actual future that's in store for me. You know, and uh, also seeing through kind of like other big issues that a lot of people take certain paths on, like um, like starting up a family, mm-hmm. buying a house, all that. I mean. Yeah, I could, but I feel like just kind of finding your own way on how to do it is the definition of being woke. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd agree with that. So, like, kind of, like, deep, like, diverting away from the program, mm-hmm. right? You say a red pill, um, if you go red with that. Pill. I also hate that one. It's, I, I, it's I hate, I hate mainstream red stuff. Pill, not really, yeah. but you, it, it's the same sort of terminology. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's something... Um, I guess I think about that a lot. Uh, I mean, Jordan Peterson basically preaches that hardcore. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's it, that's something we did talk about last time is you have to take your own path. Uh, mm-hmm. I was listening to our last podcast. Mm-hmm. We were talking about walking up the hill yeah. uh, with people shooting at you. And, you know, you may get up to the top just to find out you have to go back down. Yeah. Or you may go down just to find out that you didn't want to go up the hill anyways. Um, and so that lack of support... Actually, we had an episode last week uh, with Simkin, the Simkins brothers. Mm-hmm. I'm putting that up tonight. Uh, that should be live. Where they they've started a business um, in Northwest Arkansas, uh, Simkins Brothers Sweets, mm-hmm. and they sell these little chocolate things. It's the wrappers up there. That's how you break a diet down, right there. <laughs> um, those things are phenomenal. Oh. Um, and basically, they're like Reese's peanut butter cups. Mm-hmm. But uh, the older brother Austin, um, he has his MBA. He's out of college. The younger brother, Quinn, is still in college, and he's also doing an internship with Tyson. So he's super busy, can't really spend all the time with the company, right? Mm -hmm. So Austin said that, you know, it it was a huge risk going into this thing. And the number one thing that he's found, I said, what's the number one, you know, what's what's one thing you could tell somebody if they wanted to start their own company at your age or they wanted to do something like this? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And he said the number one thing is it's lonely. And you're going to spend a lot of time by yourself. Yeah. Nobody's going to believe in like your vision, even if you're success. Because they're, they're hitting a reasonable success. They're in um, movie theaters now. They're in the local, um, not AMC, mm-hmm. but the other one. Um, Malco. Malco. Mm-hmm. They're in the Malcos <coughs> around here. Mm-hmm. They have contracts with Harps, a whole bunch of local stores. And these things are just now happening. Like they're hitting the, they're about to hit the speed ramp, I think. Yeah. Um, and I mean, would you say that you, you've come down to that at times with your YouTube channel yeah. where you're like, you, why am I, style. why am I doing this? I hate like that. I hate the way it makes me feel, or I, I don't like this aspect of it mm-hmm. or, you know, I'm putting this out there, but nobody's really watching it. Am I doing the right thing? Am mm-hmm. I, am, am I finding my niche or am I trying to change it? Am I not being, you know, mm-hmm. where's it going? And then, um, I mean, even with the not hitting 10,000 a month, I'm sure that started to add up a little pressure in the back of your mind. Um, not so much necessarily because school is, especially with computer engineering, that's yeah. fair blame. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I always talk about Zan about how he's always busy, but yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. engineering, I get it. Like it's, you're, it's really a full-time job plus mm-hmm. some. Um, and so have there been times like that with your YouTube? Um, I mean, I know your audience is watching, so well, no pressure, course, but like... But like, if one of them started wanted to start a YouTube channel or something like that, what are yeah. some lessons that you've learned? Uh-huh. Um, it's not easy to start a YouTube channel unless you, like I said, stick to a niche, learn the lessons. But um, it's interesting because whenever you brought up that uh, company over there, 
one of my mentees from my uh, mentor program for engineering was talking to me and he was like, you can either work nine to five regular job engineering or you can work nine to nine as an entrepreneur. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so yes, it is kind of a lonely lifestyle because you really dedicate yourself to one thing and perform it to your most, especially if you've got multiple things to juggle. However, there's a reason why I've sticked to YouTube for the last five years, mm -hmm. right? It's what I really want to do right now in my life, and I'm learning more and more about it every year. Yes, I'm kind of, I've been in the game for quite a long time, but things are finally starting to pick up now to where I feel like I've, I'm like really experienced and I can really take this experience and push forward with it. And so, yes, it is hard. I've had my down moments. There especially in moments where I've seen other people get a success and unfortunately I do get jealous and that causes me to sometimes do some decisions out of fear like what I told you last time on the podcast mm -hmm. but regardless in the end you have to stay true to what you want right mm -hmm. what your heart wants and what my heart really wants is to continue YouTube because that's what I enjoy doing as well as all my other things and yes an engineering degree I enjoy it and yes, it is hard. You do get little sleep. It is very stressful at times, especially if they make certain grade averages to keep your scholarships and all that. But in the end, it's what life put down for you on the road, and you have to go with it. But it's what you truly want in the end, right? Because it's what you designed your life to take. That okay. kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. it makes sense. Um, I was thinking back to last time you said the motivation behind things you have uh, fear jealousy and purpose mm -hmm. I believe those were the three yeah um, and you got to find your purpose because yep. fear or jealousy is going to dry up at some point mm -hmm. and that's one thing I've noticed reflecting back on is sometimes you don't know that you're it's fear or jealousy mm -hmm. that's motivating your decisions yeah and you look back on it and you just go damn it <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah but yeah those those things happen um, mm -hmm. but definitely the kind of advancement of yourself is never easy uh, if you're doing anything worthwhile people aren't gonna love it mm -hmm. people aren't really gonna like you for it because they want to do something worthwhile and they don't mm -hmm. um what's the uh i don't i don't have anything else i mean that else? that that wraps a lot of it uh -huh. what, do we what, have any questions from the chat yeah what, what are some questions from the chat yeah let's see i mean they're the they're the 30 seconds, 2 minutes behind, so I could, you want to go turn off that timer? Right? Yeah, who the yeah. hell is locking up this fucking alarm? That's obnoxious. Mm. Mm. Sometimes your constitutional rights are way more important. I don't know, I think that was something about the uh, YouTube. Yeah, that's Gerald. Alright, let's see if any questions roll in. I think that, that part where you said, are there any questions? Boom. Just hit the stream. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, before we close out, we're at 51 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like this one. Mm -hmm. Let's see those. That's from E3, that. Just making a lot of What about videos. your, uh, do you want to talk about your summer trip? Summer trip? Uh, Are you still doing that? All the details haven't been fully planned out yet, but I will be taking a plane ticket there and back with two friends. E3. I'm um, trying to do a lot of... I've already contacted all my brands that I've worked with in the mm -hmm. past. Ooh. Let's see, there's a question. Oh, I don't know. Let's see if there were any old ones. Uh, yeah. Just people being like, fix your audio. Yeah. <laughs> For a while. But yeah, no, plan to get there and back June 11th to June 15th. I'm um, going to see if I can contact brands. The interesting thing is that this was spun off as like a university funded trip mm -hmm. but from what i talked to with my friend connor who's going who's the head of all this it's more or less just a personal trip i guess and i i mean there is going to be some university exposure but like we're not setting up a booth or anything so might as well take the advantage and uh use this opportunity to do cool things does mark take pictures during the e do you plan oh, to, i guess that I might be with fans content, or yeah. i plan to make quite a bit of content yeah, like, yeah um, so you're going to do a vlog while you're there? Uh, I'm going to see if that's a possibility. I mean, you need to check the media credentials, right? Because I don't know if you can just have random people, mm -hmm. you know, taking videos at your proof. But I have, like, a standard E3 ticket, not, like, a PR press ticket. Mm -hmm. But I still think you can definitely bring a camera in and do some cool things. I would hope so. Um, 
you may want to watch out. Don't bring like a stick if you're bringing a GoPro, because they won't let you bring the stick in. Mm. Um, that's a whole bunch of. I've been to a couple football games. Yeah, just like all that. that. They're just holding out there, and like you can accidentally poke people. Yeah, uh, well, they they think you're gonna use it as a, like a club. Oh, a club. <laughs> Especially well, I mean, at football games, people get passionate. Um, uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, Zane, can you scroll back over and see if there's any? No? no Mark, no, nobody no. wants to talk to you, man. Dang. Brutal. Hey, is this the most amount of viewers you've had, though, on live stream? On live stream, for live sure. On live stream, yeah, for sure. Mm, Absolutely. One or two on Friday. We usually have, like, yeah, sometimes it's one or two, uh-huh. sometimes three. Now this is three times the amount? Yeah. Maybe six. Thanks. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, no problem. Boom. Um, all right, well, anything else you want to talk about? No, I'm good. Zan, you got any more questions? No, I think we're good to wrap up. I think we're wrapped up this time. Uh, we'll probably have Mark back on sometime during the summer. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll either fly him out to San Fran or come back here or maybe I in the I fall. I the plane ticket. <laughs> yeah. When I say I'm going to fly him out, I mean I'm going to get Mark to pay for it. <laughs> uh, this episode was brought to you by Almonds. And uh, that's live for podcast episode 11, Mark Aranavar V2. Have a good one.